In this video, we're going to cover uh, sections 15.5 and 15.6 from uh, the book uh, Cummings and Kaufman. In section 15.5, we're going to see that um, there are some stars around the Milky Way in what is uh, what is known as the halos. The, um, the halos are basically two uh, spherical uh, regions in which uh, there are stars. Uh, there is a, a, an inner halo and then there's the outer halo. So these two are concentric uh, shells that um, extend way beyond the, um, the Milky Way. And um, the inner halo has a um, high concentration of globular clusters but also stars, except that the globular clusters are the most uh, visible. The stars in the globular clusters are only about 1% of the total the stars that are in the halo, whereas 99% um, of the halo stars are not uh, concentrated in clusters, so they are spread out uh, throughout the halo and they, they are more not as bright as uh, the clusters. Some, some of those clusters can also con contain black holes, but they are not as massive as the one near the center. They are in intermediate mass uh, black holes. The motion of the stars in, in those halos is, uh, is illustrated in this, uh, in this drawing. We have uh, here the motion, the direction of motion of the stars in the, in the um, center, in the central bulge of um, the galaxy whereas um, the stars in the disk move in the opposite direction now this wiggling path means that the stars are moving through the disk they go from the bottom of the disk to the top and then they bounce back and they go from the top to the bottom and they continue doing that uh, the, um, the stars in the inner halo they are moving in opposite direction than the stars in the disk, and the stars in the this uh, in the outer shell uh, they have um, very little metal, so they are supposed to be primordial stars from many uh, years ago. They are much older than the stars in the disk, which uh, are have more metallicity. The shells of the halo, they intersect and uh, the stars can go into uh, from one halo to another one and then come back. Our system, our solar system is moving, uh, right now is moving something like this at 25 degrees from the disk and we're going to be moving above the plane in about uh, 230 light years and then return every uh, 33 million years. The halos um, have differences. They come from um, different components of the early universe and we know this because of the metallicity. But understanding this will uh, give us an idea of how the Milky Way was formed. And this is a topic uh, of current research. Uh, we can see here um, a recent finding a few years ago from 2012 they they found some uh, interesting features about uh, the history of the Milky Way just by looking at the metallicity of the stars interesting is we have galaxies in our galaxy all of this happens because um, the smaller galaxy can be can collide with our galaxy they can be absorbed inside and those um, galaxies when they come in they kind of maintain their identity we can see here this is um, an infrared image we can see the path that those galaxies have when they come to uh, in, to the vicinity of the Milky Way and they leave a trace of stars during the collision they can leave they can lose some stars and eventually be absorbed and um, 
This is uh, the Canis Major Dwarf uh, Galaxy. This one is being eaten right now by our galaxy and it's going to be completely pulled apart in about a hundred million years or so. The, the star is a dwarf uh, elliptical galaxy that uh, contains about uh, one billion stars. These uh, small galaxies that are eaten, um, they, this is one example of what is known as galactic cannibalism. That uh, it is known to exist by observations and also by computer simulations. And here we have uh, uh, a picture that shows uh, the disk of the Milky Way and the galaxy that is passing, getting into our galaxy. And this is the stars that are left behind. These are the questions that I would have asked in class. Again, I'm giving you the answers so you can study them and uh, maybe find answer them again in the, in the quiz. Section six, uh, we're gonna see how is that the, um, the galaxy is rotating. It's, um, it has a, an interesting way of rotating. Imagine that this is our sun. Imagine that all of a sudden we have, in, in so, at some point, we have these three stars aligned and the center of the um, galaxy is down here and they are rotating uh, in this direction, all three stars. Well, it turns out that they have different velocities, all the three stars, but also they have larger, some of them have larger paths than our sun to move around and some of them have shorter paths to move to follow. So in a given amount of time, this, the sun can go, say, from here to there, whereas this one that is closer to the center is gonna go by angularly, is gonna move the way from, from being aligned with the other stars, and this one is gonna move less. So uh, from our point of view, we are passing this star, we are leaving it behind, but also this star is leaving leaving us behind as it moves around. So again, the stars um, at different distances have different uh, speeds. And because of that, we have this relative motion in which uh, some galaxies can pass us by. The stars closer to the center are overtaking us, whereas the stars farther from the center are l lagging behind us. Now, most of the stars move in this fashion, about 80% uh, of the stars that we can, that we have uh, nearby have uh, the same type of orbits, but there are the rest, the 20%, have orbits that they, they are taking them away from the, from the center. And uh, at least 16 stars have been uh, detected that have huge velocities, 2.7 million kilometers per hour, and they are moving away. So at some point they're going to be leaving the, the galaxy. These are known as hypervelocity stars. And it is thanks to this rotational motion that the stars don't fall down to the center of the galaxy. This video is going to show you um, how a galaxy looks like with the differential rotation, which is different velocities and for different uh, stars of different distances, and how it would look without the differential rotation. This is a brief video. It has no sound. And you can see how the stars are moving at different rates. This one's, this, these are going faster than these, and so on. But now we're gonna see what happens if we don't have, this is the case of differential rotation, what happens in, in the case in which we don't, do not have the differential rotation.
the, the velocity of the stars the, um, vary somewhat depending on where they are with respect to the center. And this graph shows uh, the speed, the orbital speed in kilometers per second as a function of how far they are from the, the stars or from the center. Uh, those stars that are near the center will have very, very small velocities, very small speeds, but they will rapidly uh, go up to the maximum. And then there will be oscillations with a growing trend. But um, on average, you can see that, yes, there is a difference. The, the ones that are farther away are faster than the ones that are closer. But um, there's not such a big difference like in the, the near the center. Now, interestingly, um, this is not what, what is expected. What is expected for uh, stars orbiting a common center is this one here. Kepler tells you that the velocity, the speed of those stars should decrease uh, with, uh, with the distance. In other words, faster, uh, farther away stars should go, should have a smaller orbital speeds. This is what we see, for instance, in the um, in, in our planets, and of course, this is the raises the question: What is pushing these stars so that they move at faster velocities? And this is the origin of uh, dark matter. There's got to be something there that we just cannot see. Um, to find our velocity, we l compare ourselves to the globular clusters that are that we know that are near the center of the galaxy and um, according to that we are moving with respect to the center of the galaxy at 878,000 kilometers an hour and um, it will take us uh, 230 million years to complete uh, one orbit. Now as the Sun goes around the Milky Way uh, the, our distance to the center almost uh, doesn't really vary and look, looking at um, all the stars that are between us and the center it, uh, that amounts to about uh, 110 billion solar masses. This is the uh, rotation that I wanted to show you with and without the so-called dark matter. In one case we have in the left case we see the velocity is decreasing for farther stars. In the other case the velocity is pretty much constant. I'm going to run it again. And these are the questions that um, I would have asked in class. Again, I'm giving you the answers so you can study them for the quiz. And I believe this is it for section 15.6.